chains. Samuel shuffled around the village with shackles about his ankles. From morning until evening, you could tell where he was, making firewood deliveries by the clanking sounds of the chains he wore. In his leather coat and apron, his hair neatly cropped with a load of branches on his back and those ever-present chains restricting his gait. He was quite a sight to behold. Surprisingly, the chains were polished and gleaming each morning as he left his house. Even more surprisingly, Samuel wore the shackles voluntarily. He was the one who put them on in the first place. His story isn't well known, but it goes like this. Ten or twelve years ago, Samuel woke up and headed outside to stretch and discover the day. As he set foot across the doorstep, he stumbled over dirty, rusted shackles. How they came to be on Samuel's doorstep, no one knew. The story of who put them there and why is for another time and place. Certainly, he had done nothing to deserve them. His first impulse was to ask around town to find the rightful owner. But then, who would claim such rusty old impediments? It would be tantamount to admitting some past crime, for only criminals wore such leg necklaces. No, no one would claim them. No one wanted them. Samuel had the odd notion that the chains had been given specifically to him. But if they had been made for him, why did they appear so old and rusted? The locks were open. The cuffs fit his ankles perfectly. Without really considering all the implications of what he was about to do, Samuel slipped the locks through their fittings and snapped them shut. Then he shuffled around the living room getting the feel of the things and for some odd reason he just kept them on. In the days that followed, sores developed on his feet from the banging and chafing of the chains. There were days when he considered trying to work his legs free from the metal wraps but he knew he could not. As weeks passed, his legs and feet toughened. He became accustomed to the limitations of movement. He began to polish the chains. It was about that same time that several bright young men came to discuss the matter with Samuel. They told him they could rid him of his chains for a certain amount of money. It might take time, but wouldn't he prefer to walk unfettered? But Samuel decided to keep them on. They fit him. As the months passed, he wore the shackles proudly. Whether they were gleaming in the morning or dusty as they dragged home in the dust of the evening streets. In that small village, it became a sort of custom for young people to imitate Samuel. <coughs> Excuse me by decorating themselves with little silver shackles about their ankles. The shackles became jewelry. The shackles have grown thin in places now. They could easily be broken. Samuel's legs are thick and strong from carrying the extra weight each day. He hardly notices the metal burden. There is no need to break the chains. Some day, Perhaps they will fall off by themselves. Life sometimes presents us with responsibilities and obligations that hamper our freedom. An elderly bedridden parent, a disabled child, a mentally disordered spouse, a failing business, a chronic injustice. All these are examples of situations 
that can place unexpected shackles on our time and movement. Some people have grown strong through these circumstances. Some, like Samuel, have learned to make even their chains bright and shining. Thank you for listening.